Right, hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week, you join myself on the banks of the river and we're gonna be fishing the whip to try and catch some silvers from the river that you can see behind me. So if you are new around here, my name's Danny and every week at 6 p.m. I put a fishing video on the channel and have done for the past two to three years. There's over 170 videos on the channel now, so well worth a subscribe if you're into your fishing. Through the course of the year, we do all manner of fishing on the channel from pike, to carp, to dace, and as you can see today, we're on the river fishing for silvers on a whip. So the river behind me, although it's called a river, is quite deep and slow moving and can resemble a canal at times. It's certainly nothing like the River Severn or the River D that you would encounter on the channel if you've watched it for a long time. What it does mean though by being slow and deep is you can get away with using the pole and the whip and the whip is what we're going to be using today. It's an excellent tool for fishing a venue like this where you're fishing for small silvers and maybe a bonus bream where you can swing them silvers to hand but you've got a bit of power to play a bream. So that is what we're going to use today. So let's take a look at the tackle that we're going to use today. So I have made a few videos on the channel using this whip and I do get a lot of questions on it. To be honest with you, it's one that I've had since I've been a kid. It's a five meter whip and it's perfect for the venue behind me. Terminal tackle wise, I've got a 1.25 gram float and I've got that fished all the way down. As you can see, it's quite a deep venue. So a bulk shot and I've got two number eight Dinsmore droppers all the way down to a size 20 hook. Let's talk about the bait that we're gonna to use today. The first thing that I did when I arrived at the peg was mix the ground bait. And as you can see today, we're going with Bait Tech Pro Natural Dark. It's a much, high, it's a heavy ground bait and it takes on a lot of water so it is vital that you do mix that ground bait when you first arrive at the peg. Once it's mixed, put it to one side to settle and then begin setting up your terminal tackle like the whip, your landing net, the keep net and all that type of stuff. By the time you've done that, 15, 20 minutes say, the ground bait will be ready to go through a riddle. So we'll pass the ground bait through the riddle and as you can see, it's a much different animal once you've removed them lumps from it. Them big lumps of ground bait are what are going to overfeed the silvers in the peg. And when you're fishing with roach and skimmers, you don't want that in your mix. So once that's been mixed, I put six handfuls into my side tray box that I'm going to use to begin to feed the peg. Into that, I've mixed in hemp seed and micro pellets. As I say, there's a lot of skimmers in this venue and bream, and I want them pellets to attract them into the swim. The hemp is heavy so it'll keep the fish in the area when we begin to fish for them and you can fish the maggot over the top. So let's have a look at the swim and how we're going to start. So the peg for today, I've got my ground bait in the bucket and as you can see, with all them lumps removed, it's a much different animal. I've got my side bucket here with the six handfuls in that I'm going to put into balls in a bit and feed into the swim but as you can see in that there's plenty of hemp and pellet but at first I'm just going to decide where I'm going to fish in the peg because you don't want to put it in the wrong spot got some more micro pellets there red maggot and some hemp the swim as you can see it's quite featureless but it's going to be fishing round about here on the whip to hand not too far now it does go out to about probably 15 foot out there but we're fishing in more like i don't know about maybe nine or ten on the shelf So then balls of ground bait fed, this is where it not being a, a river that flows much does go against you and say so I've just fed them balls of ground bait and we've got on the fish but it's where the river does go against you that it doesn't flow because it's not going to wash your bait downstream really, you've got to wait for the fish to come into your area a bit like a canal but we'll get this fish out and take a look at it, a lovely roach and as i was saying 
just coming after feeding them big balls of ground bait six balls of ground bait went in and almost within 15 seconds of putting it in we've had a fish And there's the first better quality fish of the day. Just coming after feeding that ground bait and took about 10 minutes to come into the swim. And I think it's a roach bream hybrid. But great fighting fish on this whip. And great to see some better quality fish coming into the swim. And in them early stages you can see how the swim is slowly developing. And how that ground bait has attracted then better quality fish. So, very next fish hooked into a, a quality fish. It's keeping really deep. So I don't think it's massive, but on the whip, you just gotta take your time and play the fish out. And so you're only on a, a one seven bottom and a, a three pound main line. You just take your time it looks like it's a skimmer and then micro pellets are just starting to attract these into the swim and in this deep water it's putting up a really good fight and there he is a lovely skimmer and that's one of the quality fish that I was talking about at the start the fact that that's coming the first hour is a great sign a lovely fish really getting into some quality fish now on this ground bait it's another skimmer and just feeding that hemp and then the odd big handful of maggots every couple of casts and a nugget of the ground bait it's just keeping the swim ticking over in great fun. And as you can see, the rain started coming down, which was predicted. But when you're catching skimmers like that, you don't really feel the rain. Swim fishing a deep swim with an Olivet, your whole setup has got to be geared at keeping them fish in them bottom layers. So every put in, I'm feeding a few grains of the Cheshire Particle Hemp, a heavy bait that's gonna keep them fish on the bottom, and I'm not feeding so many maggots. Probably every five or 10 trots through, I'll put in a good handful of maggot. Again, ensuring that some of the bait is getting down onto the bottom. As you've seen at the start, the balls of ground bait were really tightly compact. So they go down to the bottom, and then break up when you're fishing with the olivet it's vitally important that you keep them fish on the bottom because that is where you're fishing casting out feeding a bit of hemp and then just bringing the float back upstream into it so your bait is falling down with that hemp and it seems to be how the fish have wanted it it's another one it's a small roach but when you get into that routine and the fish are lined up you can have a great day's fishing lay it downstream a few grains of hemp bring the float back up into it and then everything is in a line laid out and there's the bite. Every so often, you hook into a slightly better fish that takes you all over the peg. And you just haven't got the line on a reel to play the fish. So you just gotta take your time 
and play it out even in deep water all fish feel a lot bigger but when you actually hook into a better fish you've just got to play it out and take your time with it it looks like it's a bream but as you can see there the fish is heading quite far out into the river I say a nice bend in the whip you just got to take your time with it and he's ours and there's that fish a cracking fight on that whip and if these are about then there's no reason why they, they can't be proper bream in here some big bronze slabs but that is a cracking fight on that whip let's get it straight back another quality skimmer just coming over that ground bait so when you're getting quite steady bites the main question in your head is when to top up and it can be quite a difficult one because there's no right or wrong answer to it that fits every box you've just got to judge it on the day and we are getting plenty of bites and i am feeding the swim with the nuggets of ground bait that you are that you can see on screen now and we are getting plenty of bites from the roach of that size so we are keeping the, the swim ticking over with the ground bait and as you can see conditions have really changed we've got quite a chop and an upstream wind now and because the river would normally flow that way if it was a normal river it would counteract the wind blowing that way so you what i mean is your float would still move slowly that way because the river lacks flow the wind is controlling the float now and blowing it upstream so it is making presentation difficult so you'll have to excuse the wind as you can see it's really bad but just hooked in to another good fish i'm playing them on the pole on the whip is fun with your heart in your mouth at times because you feel a bit out of control but this fish isn't half pulling i think it's another skimmer but when they move out off the shelf you've just got to <laughs> almost hold on and this wind isn't really helping as you can see we've got some big waves on the water but it is a nice skimmer and you can pull him against the waves and he's in the net fabulous fishing it's been absolutely amazing and they're not the biggest fish in the world but when you've only got five meters of line and the wind howling down it's great fun go so just into a another skimmer and there'll certainly be a few of these in the final net because we've had quite a few of these today been great fishing and the average size of the roach today hasn't been too bad either and all been in mint condition so the session comes to an end there now i've thoroughly enjoyed that session on the bank it's been a great morning fishing for them skimmers roach and um you know the odd hybrid on the whip and hopefully the video shows what great fun you can have on a piece of kit that probably cost me about eight ten quid when i was a kid as long as you keep that bait fishing in the lower layers with the heavy ground bait you can get plenty of bites and it doesn't 
after Costi. Uh, I really, really enjoyed that session on the bank. As you can see on screen now, I've had 21 pound, 10 ounces of skimmers, roach and hybrids. It has been a bite of chuck at times and I do think that would have continued had conditions not got so bad where presentation became difficult. Thank you very much for watching. Tight lines in your own fishing. I really do appreciate all the guys who leave the likes and comments on the videos. It really does help the channel out. If you're new around here, think about subscribing. There is a new video every Friday, as I said at the start. And I'll catch you all next week. Tight lines.